Okay, so for the outside of this lid, uh, when we place this piece on top, we're gonna see a little bit of the pattern paper on the outside and on the inside. So I think it's easiest to just cut that in one thicker strip, although we're gonna cover up most of it. I think it's just the easiest way to go. So I'm going to cut my strips one and one sixteenth of an inch so one little tick mark over an inch four of them and i'm going to use that lighter pink right let me see what that gives us It's gonna be tight, but I'm gonna do it. Okay, changed my mind just because I can. <laughs> but, uh, let's see if I can get away with cutting some three eight inch strips from this changing my mind is something that I do all the time with that with that one and one sixteenth inch of a uh, strip I was just a little too worried that I might uh, be too close to my edges so I'm gonna do it in two parts okay so first up the outside eight and three eight so here i am going to cut that one hair over eight and a quarter two strips and two strips one hair over six and a quarter okay let's glue those down you know what i'm going to be in trouble here I'm not the smartest person in the world, apparently. Okay. I need to cut these smaller as well. So for this outside frame, again I've got three 8 inch strips and I've got two of them to a hair over eight and a quarter and two of them to a hair over six and a quarter and I've inked up the long ones. Add some glue and we're going to do the same thing as I did on the inside of the lid. We're building that frame with a foam miter so we can just see a hint of that color coming through and then again the foam miter there I might just need to use that black of that black that blue stripe on this cover as well where I said uh, it's not the pattern that I like the most but it might just be what this cover needs so these side strips are a little bit on the long side so basically what I'm doing 
is I know that that is on this side. I, I lined it up on top. Here it was sticking out. And then I just cut it a little shorter with uh, tapering. And then 9 out of 10 times I am about right. So sometimes still a little long because I will always be I rather have it being a little too long than a little too short. Okay, so now we need to do the inside of the frame. It's going to be a little bit more tricky, but I think I'm gonna have it stick out about a 3 8 of an inch on both sides of the frame. So I need to cut my pieces to uh, 6 and 1 8 is the frame, so add 3 quarters of an inch to that. 6 and 7 eighths, right? 1, 2, 3. One, two, three, yeah, six and seven eighths, two of them, and two, two, four and seven eighths. So I can do that out of one strip actually. That's nice. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with the longer ones. I try to have it stick out even on both sides and I just want to have a little bit of a black edge showing there just to um, oh how do you say that highlight no hmm doesn't come to me it happens to me a lot you should see me when I'm having a conversation with somebody in English, it's terrible. I always struggle to find the right words. But they know. <laughs> I can I can make myself clear, like just say like oh the right word is not coming to me, but I mean like this and this and people understand most of the time. Okay, so this is not going to end up being precise, but that's okay because I only need that inside part to be um, kind of uh, perfect. So we are faking our way through this here. Don't you just love it when you're able to do that? So I'm just lining it up where I have that black border that I want to have. I'm marking where the papers come together. Cutting that 45 degree angle or that about 45 degree angle and then when we place it we aim for that nice black border and for that point to come together nicely. And here I ink three sides but I do the diagonal side and the short side because that's what we're gonna see. So normally, like when I do this one, I aim for the outside to line up and now I'm aiming for the inside to line up and I'm thinking I should have turned my piece around. Would have been a little bit easier perhaps, but Something like that. So I'm not worried about that not lining up because when I place this frame on top you are not going to see any of it. We hardly see any of this paper. So <laughs> for some of you it might be a waste of paper. Sorry, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. But that's 
the advantage of using the strips. It's not like we're using a large sheet of paper. Or we're just using some 3 8 inch strips. It's not that. It's not a whole lot of paper. And I think you can even get away with quarter inch strips if you want to save more. But I feel the smaller the strip, the harder it gets to control them. Here I'm not bad actually. Maybe I should have added that one eighth of an inch extra on my side strips. But like I said, we're not going to see anything of it, so it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. There we go. And then this one can go on top. But like I said, we need acetate. And I'm not quite sure yet if I am going to place the acetate in between my chipboard layers or on top of this piece. And it depends on um, if I'm going to do shaker bits. But while I'm saying that I'm kind of thinking like yeah, even if I don't do shaker bits I can still just do it on top. Because it doesn't matter that much. So let's measure out what we need on acetate. See, and then now I'm, I'm kind of in doubt. Like, do I want to have more pink on here? Or do we want to have the blue? But I, what I might do is just do the pink here and then add blue on the side of the box. So we have a pink and blue um, box. So for the acetate. Okay, let's get that out of the way. I'm needing a piece. Seven and one eighth of an inch. By five and one eighth of an inch. Now I have a slime. If I can find it. Right here, what is this? Five and one eighth. Ah, it's too short. Too bad. Yes, okay. Uh, I'm gonna give you um, seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. Let's do seven and a quarter by five and a quarter so you can be a little bit more safe with your quarter inch tape. Um, uh, but I'm not, you're gonna use tape by the way because I cannot stick the tape on here. I need to do this with glue, so Ugh, that scares me. I'm going to be super duper careful. This, this is going to be the side that is showing. So I'm just going to super duper careful add a thin strip of wet glue to this acetate on all four sides. And I'm really terrible, sorry again about all the background noise. I don't know why they decide to start doing some work right in front of my house every time I decide to turn on a camera. But that is what it is and by the looks of what they are doing, I'm afraid it's only going to be worse for the next couple of weeks. But I actually only have two more weeks left of being able to film because, well maybe I can film a little bit longer than that. but. Then summer break will start and then I have three kids running around in the house every single day until we move but then actually until we are in Australia and I found a new school for them so um, yay looking forward to it. <laughs> now I love my kids but I just love them a little bit more when they are gone sometime. I just need my filming time, right? <laughs> okay, so I try to burnish the glue towards the outside of the acetate and not so much towards the inside of the frame because I don't want to be able to see that glue uh, after placing my pattern paper, right? So really careful, I try to just tell the glue, okay, I want you to flatten out, spread out a little bit, but go that way. <laughs> 
here. Oh, I should not have pushed again. Darn it. I'm so scared of acetate and wet glue. I really need to let this dry because... And then with the pattern paper on top we will secure it a little bit extra. I'm gonna feel that I place that glue on top. Okay, we need to let this dry and um, I need to stop filming for now, but you won't notice much of it probably. Um, let's see if I can find some shaker bits that go with this and otherwise we're going to do it out. But this will be on top right there. So you can also go without of course, but I just wanted to do a little extra. Okay, we will continue quickly. Okay, as you can see, I have been continuing on uh, the box a little bit, but I'm going to show you how I did uh, my closure. Uh, well, I, s I started on it, but I still I did one side and one side, and I still need to do the other one, so I'm going to show you what I did. So the easiest option for a closure is to use magnets on this to keep your flaps in place, but I'm going to use uh, some elastic cord and I've used some circle dies. So what I have, and I use them quite a lot. I use mostly the same size uh, a lot, but um, I have a nested stitched circle die set and I believe the brand is Cottage Cuts. And I've used the smallest one from that for my outer circle, black cardstock. And then I have uh, this one is from Sizzix and I have a stitched or sorry a nested circle die set from Sizzix as well But this is not from the set. This one came with a small uh, when I bought my um, Sizzix Big Shot I got some dies with it and this one was um, When was in there and that one fits perfectly in the uh, middle of my black stitched circle where I can still see my stitched edge so uh, that's what I've used. I have a scrap piece of my blue. I've cut one piece to size to go on the side of the, the, the base. So I've got that to size and then that um, scrap piece is what I've used for my, uh, for my circle. So I need to glue that down still and then uh, so what am I going to do is I'm going to ink these little pattern paper circles with some black suit and then I'm going to glue it on top of each other and then later I also need to cut some um, let's do one thing at a time I'm a little I feel that I'm a little rushed I want to get this done and I don't have a lot of time but being rushed never it's never a good thing for me with these sort of things. So glue that one down. And this one. And then I'm going to get something that I can use to pierce some holes in here and I want to do that as best as I can in the center of this piece. Now I know that my outer circle is about three quarters of an inch. So the center is at three eight. So I'm using that three eight inch line on the grid to find the center from top to bottom. And then I'm gonna come in three eighths of an inch as well. So one, two, three, somewhere there. And I'm gonna go all the way through. Oh, Wait, first I'm going to cut some chipboard. I have a scrap piece of chipboard here. And then I'm going to use the die that I've used for my pattern paper. So the smallest circle. And I'm just with a pencil drawing that on my chipboard. And I have the really strong scissors from Tim Holtz. So I'm just using that to cut out that circle from the chipboard. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but... Um, 
I want it to be rounded off as best as I can and I want it to be about the same size as the pattern paper so it falls nicely behind my black circle without sticking out so that's one and two so back to my glue I'm just gonna glue one of these you just don't want to have too much of a sharp yeah like i said you want it to be a little bit rounded off so maybe there are some things that i want to do a little bit better some glue and i'm going to glue these on the back of my uh, cardstock circle so try to get that centered and let that dry for a second The other one now I already have the hole in here so that's going to work against me a little bit but I'm just gonna push it on here okay so the one that I still need to find the center from I'm just going to do the same thing so three eighths of an inch is in my case the center so i'm using the grid on my ruler to find it from top to bottom and from left to right and then i'm gonna go through all the layers so i need to go through my chipboard in this one okay and then i have the Tim Holt bread with the longer legs and I really need that now because I need to go through a double layer of uh, chipboard so two of those okay, that can go to the side and then back to my lid I've got my pattern paper one and three eighths of an inch this long piece by eight and a quarter i'm not going to give you every single measurement of pattern paper in this project by the way but here for the box i'm marking uh, the angle i can use my punch for it but i always feel that it's just a little bit off of how i want it to be so i just rather do it like this And then I just cut it with my scissors, ink the edges, and using wet glue because I'm gluing it on the tape. And like I said, the double sided tape, I'm afraid that that's not going to hold on here, it's going to come off. Sticking this down with an even border. I'm always, I'm, I'm pretty slow, right, with creating my projects, but I just take time in several steps. It's not like I'm not sticking down this paper and it's done. I'm always burnishing the glue, spreading out the glue, making sure my edges have a nice stuck to it. And that's just... You know, it's not always the best thing for video, but that's why one of the reasons that I often don't film my decorating. Because it's taking forever. <laughs> but um, I just enjoy, you know, I'm not rushed. I'm just, it's almost like therapy. So next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ruler. So I'm doing this on the long side. You can change that up if you want to. But I'm going to mark... Uh, one and three eighths of an inch and I believe I did that from the edge of my pattern paper yeah so I'm getting the edge of my pattern paper that's where I start measuring and I'm gonna go one and three eighths of an inch inwards one and three eighths of an inch and then I also need to find the center uh, from top to bottom and that's around one and three quarters for my chipboard edge or sorry, three quarters of an inch, not one and three quarters, but three quarters of an inch. 
so I mark that as well. So this is where I need to be. And I'm going to do the same thing from the other side. So one and three eighths of an inch from my the edge of the pattern paper. And then I'm also going to center that out from top to bottom. And that's about three quarters of an inch from the chipboard edge. So that's where I want to be. And then again I'm getting my paper piercer in. And making the hole in here. So I'm doing it with a bread. Because I'm going to put the elastic cord around the circle when we close it. And I'm afraid when I do it with glue only. That over time the strength of the elastic cord might just rip off your circle. So this is like an extra security to keep that circle in its spot. So I'm going to put the bread through and I'm going to add some wet glue on the chipboard circle here on the back. And this paper is going to be under the flap with the lines uh, horizontal. So I'm going to try to get the lines horizontal here as well. I'm pushing it on here. I want to make nice contact. Making sure that my lines go from top to bottom and then on the other side. Open up those legs and push them down and I will secure that a little bit more in a second. Same thing with the other one. Some glue on the chipboard. Okay, and then I have this little tool here and I'm just going to squeeze the legs a little bit in the chipboard. There we go. So this needs to dry. I'm going to leave it alone for now. Then I have my piece of pattern paper for the short side, which is again one and three eighths, but this time by six and a quarters. And I need to do the same thing with the angle, right? Make sure that I have a little bit of black showing on all sides. I almost feel that I can miss a little hair on this piece. So that's what we do. Just correct that a little bit. Yep, yeah, that's a better fit. Hold it in place. And give it some ink. Okay, so now next up, I'm going to set my eyelets or I'm going to make the holes for the eyelets on the short side. So, what I did this time, I measured one and one eighth of an inch inwards from the edge of the pattern paper so one and one eighth of an inch and then again i need to find the center from top to bottom so that's the three quarters of an inch mark that do the same thing from this side one and one eighth of an inch center from top to bottom And then what I have are some breads for, um, normally if I would set these breads, I would use the one eighth of an inch um, punch on my crocodile. Uh, these are the same color as my eyelets. Uh, but this time I'm not doing the one eighth of an inch hole, I'm using the three sixteenth of an inch hole. So I'm getting my crocodile. 
and I'm just going to punch my hole where my mark that I've made is in the center of that hole one and then the other one we can do them at the same time right there we go then I have some elastic cord and I was out so I had to go and get some new ones I've bought this at Michael's I have bought elastic cord from the dollar store in the in the past but over time it loses strength so um, I rather spend a little bit more oh and it's not the same are you freaking kidding me Okay, some elastic cord so like I said I bought some new one but this is thinner than the one that I have been using but luckily I had uh, a piece somewhere and I had to cut it in half and that's just about enough so uh, I have to do this right but I want my tail to be about three inches and I'm going to put this through the hole from the inside. That's just what works best for me. That's what I say. And then of course it doesn't cooperate. And I want that to go to the outside. So I want this to be about three inches. I can go a little further. And then I'm, I'm gonna have that both of that on the side towards the same side and then I'm going to push my eyelid in with that and make sure that you have your eyelid setter on the right uh, settings and set the eyelid and then we have the elastic cord secured in the eyelid there so I need to do that one more time I'm going to fold this in half this one is going to be a little tighter in length but I'll make it work so I'm going to pull it out as far as I can pulling it to the sides where I want it to go so also the short side here I have that to the side both ends push in the eyelids with that let me measure out how much do I have yeah, this one is a little shorter, but okay, that's what it is. Yeah. And set the eyelid. So now on the back, it's not looking pretty, right? So we need to go and cover that up. Um, what I like to do is I have the luxury of having some black tie back. Um, but I like to use some Tyvek for covering it up. I'm going to cut these tails a little shorter. At least there where I think that's needed. This one maybe a little bit. And that will be fine, we'll see. So I'm going to see if I can find some legs out there. So I have scrapies here. Uh, which will be fine. I just need. Uh, I can just cut it here. I'm going to make some patches with this. So if you have white Tyvek, you can use an uh, alcohol ink based marker like a Sharpie um, to color your Tyvek black. You only need a little bit. We just want it to cover up the whole of the. Uh, of the eyelid basically so I'm just going to cut a piece that's going to fit and I'm also thinking about doing is I'm going to put these elastics next to each other where I can do that and I'm going to mark a little bit in the chipboard where they are lying and then I will get a um, craft knife or a sharp blade, whatever will come up first. Craft knife it is. And I'm going to make a little incision here in the chipboard. On both those pencil lines. 
and I'm not gonna go all the way to the eyelid stay away from it a little bit but I'm cutting in that direction and then I'm basically going to peel a few layers away here I just I'm going to see if I can show you that up close what I did right there I just cut some of the chipboard layers away and I can place the elastic cords in there and then I reduce the bulk a little bit of it so I'm, I'm kind of feeling that I might be able to do one more layer but just make sure that you don't go all the way to the other side right and this can give uh, quite a mess with fibers that are coming off okay so I'm going to cut them to length where they fit in there so it's a little bit of a fuss but um, yeah just reducing the bulk a little bit put some glue in there and then I'm going to just push them in there and then I can use a little bit of tape to secure them in place because the wet glue is not really working I see Just make sure you're going to cover up your double sided tape with pattern and paper, then you'll be just fine. So I still have some bulk, but not as much as when I would not be doing this. Though I feel that I've placed them next to it and not into it. So let's get them in the right position. That's better. Okay, and then with my with my Tyvek, uh, let's use a little bit of a thinner tape. I need to cut this a little bit smaller. I don't need that much. This is enough. So thin tape. I'm gonna go on the black side in my case around the perimeter of the Tyvek oh come on so I've done that here for this piece and then I'll remove the tape backings so it's a little bit of fuzzing around here but it's just to get a nice end result so the Tyvek has um, why am I doing this? Patching it because there are some sharp edges on the eyelid, and I don't want that to damage my pattern and paper. And then the way that I'm doing this right here, just stick that down, and then we see the black through the eyelid. So that's nicely finished off. So I need to do that on all four sides. Okay, so I did that and then on this piece of Tyvek, which was originally an envelope, this is the closure part here. There is already tape, so I've cut off some small pieces for that, of that to cover up the legs of the breads as well. Just because it's quick and then that's done. So now the big test. <laughs> did I do this all right? So let's try this closure here my lid if it's fitting so I can place this in here we can close the flaps and get the elastic cord behind the circles oh this is too loose darn it is it too loose oh, it's okay it's okay so I can lift it on the lid even, because it's keeping it all tight. So maybe, it, I did 3 inches right, like I said, but maybe you want to do more closer to 2 and 3 quarters. Because this one is a little bit on the loose side. You see that? It's, it could have been better. I might go back and try to um, uh, redo that. I'm going to try to... Um, 
can also just open up one side only to get it off, by the way. Uh, but what I might try to do here is take this off. I'm just going to redo that, right? I'm, that's, that's, these are things that are keeping me up uh, at night. So, And then with a little something I'm going to try to get this out. This is of course the one that I did with the wet glue that's now dry. So maybe I need to get something to get under here, so I have to be careful. making sure that I'm not damaging anything too badly. Okay, so there we are. And then I'm just gonna get myself a new one, if I know where I left them. So as long as, you, as you're careful, you can Redo your things. Like I said, we have to be careful. So just making it a little shorter. Reset the eyelid. And then I have to make a new patch, right? So that one is better now. This one. Was it too long or is it okay? That one is okay, that one is okay, this one is okay. So, better. Better. And I want to do all of that before I finish up this. So, um, I went to the... The... My uh, scrapbook store close to my house. To get a little bit more of my pattern paper. So I have two um, 12, by 12, 12 by 12 paper packs to work with now. And I also got these, uh, it's called a sequin mix from Picket Fence Studio. And I thought that might work well um, with this collection. I just wanted to have something fun. And now I need to figure out how I can open this. And my hands are looking terrible. I'm really sorry for it. It's because of all the ink and the messing around that I've been doing here. Okay, Ooh, carefully. So these are some flat sequins, some normal sequins. I'm just going to throw some stuff in here. I don't want it to be too much either. And then like there is no um, pink in here, right? So I might see. Okay, now that's just going to be too bright, so that's not... I'm not going to do it. There is enough pink going on on this cover. So in here there are some little feathers, which maybe not go really well with the collection, but it's also not terrible. So um, what I did on this thing here... Um, uh, what I did is I've placed the acetate on top and did my pattern paper over the acetate so on the same side as i stuck down the acetate so here is just the frame and then here is the acetate that gives me that thickness of this chipboard a space here as well and i need to do something about the static okay that's better i just want to make sure yep there is enough space at least. 
So again, I have to really use my uh, wet glue to stick this down. So I'm gonna go around the inside edge, the outside edge, and then I'm going to fill it in a little bit. And this looks like a whole lot of glue, but with the fine tip that I'm using, it's not as much as you might think it is. Okay, there's not really a top and bottom to this, but I'm just going to aim for an even border on inside and outside. So with the wet glue I have a little bit of wiggle time to even that out. And then I really have to put some pressure on here to get it all to stick down. Get this bone folder here because I can give a little bit more more pressure and then I think I want to lay it flat on my work surface for a second to give a little bit more I can push it down a little bit more to let this dry so for the the base of the box and you see my uh, all my tryouts are in here but I'm going to use the blue striped paper which is the backside of my cut apart elements the cards the 3 by 4 and the 6 by 4 cards and I'm going to place that here on top so I've got it to 1 and 7 8 in height and then I believe these pieces are for the long side 8 and a quarter and for the short side six and a quarter and then i'm not going to do anything to the inside as of yet um, i will come back to that later on i guess so perhaps i'm only going to do the uh, the bottom and then i might use uh, the flower paper that i've used in here at the bottom of the box as well and then, uh, yeah, basically, oh yeah, on the inside, I'm going to use the green. So I've got myself a piece of green here. So here, this was six and one eighths, I believe. Oh no, eight by six. Yep, eight by six to go on this, sol this whole piece. I might do something to this later, but that depends on how much space I have. And then I will also use the green uh, on the flaps. And I do that the same way as I did the, the pink here, right? So I can close this. So this is just an um, alternative way to uh, close your box instead of come on instead of using um, magnets. And I see that what I need to do is with my bone folder lift the edges up a little bit so the elastic cord will go under it a little bit easier. Not too much, we don't want to have it come off, right? There we go. So I don't want this to be curled. Or twisted. So, there we go. And then, the same thing here. Yeah, this one is a little long, so I might I might go back and correct this one as well, the same way as I did with the other one. It's just a little bit on the long side, and if I'm going to leave it like this, it will lose its strength over time, and, and it will only be worse. So I need to go back and do this as well, this one. Okay, but the box is uh, constructed; it's almost complete. I'm I will do probably do some extra decorating here, but. I have to see, um, I will do that later on. I'm, first I'm going to work on my inserts and get that on camera for you because I have to do some time management here to get it all done. But this is the box. I hope you uh, like it. I can try to uh, do this for a second so you get an idea of the combination of papers that I'm doing. Um, yeah, a little bit different, but I like it. So I hope you uh, uh, enjoyed it so far and in the next video we are going to work on our first insert to go in the box. 
So for now I want to say thank you for watching. And enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.